Hey everybody, it's Dr. Mystical and welcome back to Tarot Tuesday. This week, episode number 56, The Spirit Within, with The Spirit Within Tarot from Stephen Bright, uh, who was a fabulous uh, tarot reader as well as uh, creator. Um, if you can hear this show, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, uh, let me know that you can hear the show and see the show so that I know that uh, you're there. So go ahead and hit that heart or hit that hit that like you mad face people, <clears throat> you have some real problems. <laughs> you have some real anger issues, you mad face people. Okay, so a couple of quick announcements. First, welcome back from a couple weeks of hiatus. Uh, well, we rested the show and rested, uh, rested during the holiday break. Hopefully you had a wonderful break and enjoyed yourself. Um, and you got some wonderful, wonderful time. Let me know in the comments, what was your favorite, favorite thing about the holiday break, uh, be it somebody you spent time with or something you did, or maybe something you got. But let me know uh, in the comments what your favorite thing about the break was. Second, more the most important thing that I'm gonna say. This weekend, January 12th and 13th in Fort Myers, Florida, the Southwest, Southwest Florida, UFO and Paranormal Con is happening at um, the Shriners. Um, you need to be there. This is going to be an amazing show. Some amazing speakers have been lined up for the show, as well as, of course, yours truly, my good friend, uh, Reverend Kayla Ray from Beyond Earth Healing is going to be there. Lots of other great speakers. I've uh, The event is in my events list, but check that out uh, and uh, make your plans to be there to grab a reading. Uh, readings are gonna be very, very economical. So come in for that. And then lastly, before I start taking requests um, for, for readings, I wanted to uh, thank everybody for taking part in our very first group manifestations project around the new year and our goals for the new year. If you haven't joined the Dr. Mystical Gathering, the Facebook group associated with this page, you should. And you should check out the absolutely amazing uh, runes that EM, one of our group members did as part of this group manifestation. Just absolutely uh, stunning, stunning runes uh, to help us formulate and think about our year. So hopefully you get a chance to uh, join the group I put the button in the show. You can join the group right from there uh, and check out the stuff that's done. If you're part of that group manifestations project, continue to work on your creative aspect of it. Get that stuff in so we can take advantage of it and show it off a little bit and enjoy it. And then I'm going to be working on a group manifestations project, much lower entry for February. I think uh, using the 40 servants, uh, chaos magic sigil magic system so look for that coming up that said uh tonight we're going to be reading with the spirit within this is a deck i had on my agenda for december but then was fell under the weather couldn't make it happen so <clears throat> i wanted to kick off the year with it so that we could uh, get a chance to enjoy the deck it's been it's been a while since we could enjoy the deck, so I wanted to make sure that we could. Hello, Nicole, how are you? Hello, EM, hello, are you, how are you? Hey, Claudia, how are you? So here, now that we got the announcements out of the way, now I'll start taking uh, requests. If you want a re reading from the Spirit Within Tarot, drop it in the comments that you want a reading. I'll do my best to keep up with it. So here's how we're gonna go. So let's see here. So if I can't scroll up any further, then I don't know what I'll do, but. We'll see to do two. Um, Brianna, I have you. Or Bri yeah, Brianna, I have you. <clears throat> Happy New Year to you, EM. Hello, Nicole. Hello, Robin. How are you? Hello, Anita. I'll add you to the list. Do, 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 do. Well, thanks, Anita. I missed you too, but I needed a break. It's, you know, doing a weekly show is um, exhausting. <laughs> Sure, yeah, I'm all edge of the list as well. I'm reading the things you did over the break, which is really exciting. Uh, 
Uh, Stacy, I'll add you to the list as well. Hey, Shalia, how are you? Yep, Brianna, I got you. I don't take reading requests until after I do the announcements. That way I can get the announcements out of the way and I don't have to be um, interrupted with the scrolling back and forth. Kate, I've got you as well. Shalia. Robin. Got you as well. Do, 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 do. Let me just make sure. <clears throat> okay, so it's a short list. So if you want a reading, this is the time. Get in on the comments. Say that you want a reading in the comments. This is my list so far. Brianna, Anita, EM, Stacy, Kate, Shalia, and Robin. Not a very long list. That's okay. That's okay. So if you want a reading, drop it in the comments. Uh, I'm going to ask a question before we get going, give people a little bit more time. Hang on a second. Where are my interactives here? Well, look at that. So much for absolutely. Uh, all right, so hang on. Do, 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 do. Teresa, I'll add you as well. Claudia or Christina. Christina, I've got you. Claudia, I've got you as well. Where are my interactives? I scheduled some interactives, but I don't see them. Maybe I didn't save them. Bummer. That's okay, because I remember the question that I wanted to ask. Okay. But, but Christina, I've got you. Angelina, I've got you. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so now the list looks like this. Brianna, Anita, EM, Stacy, Kate, Shalia, Robin, Teresa, Christina, Claudia, Angelina. Those are the people that I see. If I missed you, Tracy, I see you as well. If I missed you, let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, that's okay. It happens. I'm a little rusty. It's been a couple weeks. I'm comfortable with that. <laughs> I'm comfortable with that. All right, so we'll ask the real question I wanna know. Actually, there's um, two questions that came out of the Facebook group. As you know, Claudia, everybody, if you haven't been part of the group or haven't been keeping up, Claudia, Claudia One, um, Claudia is our group moderator. So um, if you've not been keeping up, uh, she's our, our, our group moderator and I'm thrilled about that uh, because she has some really interesting questions. And I hope that you consider engaging with those questions because I like to know. She's asking some interesting stuff and I'm curious about it. So, all right, so let's get a card out of the way uh, for Brianna and then uh, see how the show goes for the rest of the show. Maybe people are just so entranced with the current political climate that they're watching whatever the hell's going on tonight. some sort of address. I'm more interesting. I got a better hat. All right. So, all right. So this one's for Brianna and it just jumped out of the, jumped out of the, uh, out of the deck. So we'll just go with that. So Brianna, it's a knight of wands. So you know that wands is a suit of work effort. It's the things you do to get the things you want. And the Knight of Wands signals uh, an incoming change in the work and effort that you're putting out there. What Spirit is kind of whispering to me, Brianna, is, or yeah, Brianna, that um, this is kind of a change in job. So I'm hearing change in job for you. That this might be something that you've been thinking about for a while, but I'm hearing a change in job. So this is actually you moving from kind of what you've been doing to what you really wanted to do. So this is really a positive change for you, but nonetheless, it's a change. You need to be kind of balanced. So reading intuitively on the card, I want you to look at the knight is holding the wand 
and kind of balancing. So even though this new change for you, this new job or effort or task for you is exciting, I want you to maintain balance. The Knight of Wands is saying, we're going to change this for you, but you got to kind of use your better judgment. Don't get too giddy. Make sure you're using uh, your meditative mind, your spiritual being, kind of your life in balance to assess this thing and make sure that it works out for you. So hopefully that makes sense for you, Brianna. The Knight of Wands, I think for you, that signals a job change uh, for this upcoming period of time for you. Uh, yeah, Tina, I can add you the list. <laughs> well, Robin, I think you just need to have me on both channels. <laughs> Liz, if you want a reading, let me know in the comments uh, that you'd like one. Say, I'd like a reading. That's how we get there. You're welcome, Brian. All right, this brings us to Anita. All right. So, Anita, this one's for you, and it's the Ace of Wands. So, the Ace of Wands, again, we just saw Wands, and I am shuffling the deck. The Ace of Wands signals a new, again, Wands task, effort, work, right? The things you do to think, get the things you want. And the Ace of Wands is an opportunity for you to be doing something new with your life in terms of a task. So I feel like this is for you. You're being given something. I don't feel like this is something that you necessarily have always wanted to do but I feel like you're going to understand that this is more of a calling, more of a, uh, yeah, more of a calling that you're going to get this thing and it's going to have tasks to it. It's going to feel irksome, right? It's going to feel weighty. It's going to feel like it's work effort, but I also feel like it's going to feel like for you a calling, something you've always been meant to do. And so in that, it's, you're going to find it very fulfilling. I think you're also going to see with this, Anita, that things are going to start to have to fall off. They're going to have to start to fall away to make room for this new task, to make room for this new effort. So be mindful of that. If you're starting to see things start to kind of pull away from you or maybe fall off the radar, you might be getting ready for this Ace of Wands event to happen for you. So that's for you, Anita. Sure, Cassie, I'll add you as well. <laughs> oh, that was quick. Good for me. <laughs> Liz, I'll add you to the list as well. That was quick. He probably should work to catch the show too. You know, how could my guidance be any worse or any better than anybody else's. All right, so this brings us to EM, and then I'm gonna ask a question. So get ready, get your comment fingers ready, because after EM, I'm gonna ask a question, and I'm gonna to wanna to know, I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a cue from uh, my son's new favorite YouTube channel, How Ridiculous, or as he says it, how we dickweous, how we dickweous. That's how he said it when he was a baby. And he just keeps it up because he knows it, thinks it's cute. If you get the answer right, I'll pin you. All right, so here we go, EM. This one's for you. And it's the 10 of pentacles, the 10 of pentacles. Now the 10 of pentacles, you know that I read ace to 10 in terms of kind of a journey. And I always think about the 10 of pentacles as a paying forward. So pentacles is, Pentacles is our resources. It's the things we use to get the things we want. Time, money, energy, resource. It's a very physical world, physical realm car. And so these are the things that you've kind of gathered in this physical world. And the 10 suggests that you've done very well on this kind of journey of gathering or saving your resources. Now, what you see in this card is you see a character here with this dog um kind of looking on to this next group of or generation of people and if you know the rider weight you know that's 
very similar to the Rider weight and how it's been represented. So the Ten of Pentacles always for me um, talks about a way for you to pay forward this saving of resources, pay forward this gathering of time, money, energy to the next generation. It really is a giving forth of your resources and the things that you've saved, not only in terms of expending it, that is releasing it, but also in a teaching moment. So I think about this character here as a little bit older, a little bit wiser. And so while we're being generous at this point with what we've saved or what you've saved, you're also being generous with ways that they can learn to fish, so to speak. So whatever, I think this is a time for you if you've been weighing an expense, weighing a big expenditure, the Ten of Pentacles says, go for it and make sure that it's wisely used and why and builds into the next project or the next generation and ability for them to save the resources that they need. That's for you, Ian. All right. Tracy, she says, I'm late. I'm sure there's too many ahead of me, but I can add you to the list and there's not too many out of you. So don't, don't fret. You're better, but one thing's for sure. If you're not on the list, you definitely will not get a reading. <laughs> All right. All right. And I need to, I need to let you know too. So that's good. Hey, Joe, how are you? Okay. First one to comment with the right answer. I'm going to give you four choices. First one to comment with the right answer. I'm going to pin the comment to the top here. All right. So here's the deal. Claudia, our group moderator, asked this question. How many cards, the deck systems, do you think are on the mystical mantle, which right now is in still the, the, the Yuletide spirit, but how many decks do you think I have? Is it, and I want you to write the number, but is it A, 19, B, 25, C, 15, or D, 21? How many? First one to get it right, I'm going to pin your comment. So how many people on there? How many people? How many people? You are on the list, Liz. Yes. Uh, other Kate, you're going to be Kate, Kate F. I'll put you on the list, Kate F. All right. So what is it? Is it 19, 25, 15, or 21? All right. So, all right. Well, you got to be fast. You got to be fast. Fast, 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 fast. It was 21. Liz got it right. Or wait, who got it first? I think it's, I think it was Anita got it first. Anita got it first. It was 21. Oh, wait, Robin's in there. Oh, my God. Robin was right. Robin was first. It's 21. 21. I had to pin her comment. All right. So Robin wins 21. That's how many cards are on the list. Ooh, so many people, so many people. That was fun. That was fun. It's 21. Good, good deal. It was hard because the comments were jumping around, jumping around. It's 21. I have 21 decks of cards. I just counted them tonight. See 21 decks of cards and divination systems uh, that I have on my mantle. <clears throat> this includes the first and second edition of the dice. So I count those as different, different systems. <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry, Angelina. It's all you win is bragging rights. That's <laughs> All right, so now we know the answer to the question about the mystical mantle. All right, let's go to Stacy. Stacy, you're up next. So we're shuffling these up. Again, if you're just joining, uh, we're using the Spirit Within Tarot from a very talented creator and tarot, uh, tarot reader, Stephen Bright. Uh, I've tagged him 
in the description of this video, and I hope that you will. Hey, Claudia too is around. All right, other Claudia. I'll add your list absolutely. Um, and so I hope, please do, um, after the show, uh, go over and like his page. Follow him on Instagram too. Really beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful card uh, images on Instagram. Just a, I really, I really enjoy uh, following him as a creator and a reader. Uh, and I learn. I think I learn a lot um, by seeing his work. So, all right, this one's for you, Stacy. It's the Five of Pentacles. <clears throat> so we just saw Pentacles. So we know that Pentacles is about resources and. It's a rough one. Uh, we know that Pentacles is about resources. And so the Five of Pentacles is kind of the middle of the journey. So if Ace to 10 is the journey of Pentacles, Five is kind of this place in the middle. And think about any project or any kind of savings plan. You get a little headway, and then what happens? You get a setback. And I think for you right now, Stacy, you're in that, maybe you're in that period, an unexpected bill or an unexpected expense of the resources or the physical world that you've kind of been manifesting and saving and, and keeping together. So I think in terms of your resources, you're kind of at a period where things are a little bit slow and maybe you've had an unexpected expense on the path. In other words, something unexpected something that you weren't thinking about kind of blindsided you in terms of the time, money, and energy that you spend in the world. And now you've had to start dealing with that or you will start dealing with that. So that's what the Five of Pentacles talks about. Now, while there's a lot of kind of doom and gloom in this card and there's a lot of what was me, and I think that that's okay and that's normal, understand too that Five is in a sequence. And so this too shall pass. So just go through this. Recognize that this unexpected thing was going to happen. You're going to feel like crap about it, but it will pass and it will get better. And so that's for you, Stacy. So if you're going through that right now, understand that the turn is around the corner. If you're not, brace yourself for that. Maybe put a little extra aside uh, in terms of your time, money, and energy so that you can deal with um deal with that expense. So hopefully that made sense for you. If it did, let me know in the comments. I really appreciate that. All right, this is Kate one, not Kate F or Kate two. Just so you know, the comments seem slow tonight. That's not, not, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just saying if you're commenting and I'm not commenting back, it might be because the comments are slow. Technology has not been my friend today at all. I resorted to full on paper and pencil all damn day. <laughs> all right. So Kate, this one's for you and it is the strength card. This is a little bit, this, this card always, for whatever reason, reminds me of the Lion King. Um, but for you, Kate, um, Kate one, it's strength. And strength is kind of about the, for, I want you to think about strength, not in physical strength, but rather in fortitude, rather in balance, rather in courage, rather in um, yeah, resiliency. These are the words I want you to think about in terms of this, that you're going to stare into this beast's eyes that you're facing, and you're going to muster within you the courage, the strength, the fortitude, the resiliency in order for you to deal with this thing. This is a point in your life, Kate, where you need to be able to demonstrate your ability to kind of harness all of your worlds and keep them in balance. And it will be difficult because it is a beast. The lion is the beast. And the beast needs to be tamed. And in doing that, you need strength, courage, balance, fortitude, resiliency. So I want you to think about that. There's a lot about to happen for you. And everything's going to start to swirl around you. 
And you're going to have to find within you and within spirit the strength to bring all of these things to bear, all of your talents, expertise, magic to bear on this situation so that you can keep things in balance and tame the beast. So hopefully that makes sense for you, Kate. Kathy, I can ask you, I can add your list. Absolutely. Happy to do it. Uh, we read till about 10 o'clock Eastern. So if we get there, we get there. Um, yeah, right, Claudia. I think that's a big part of it is my notifications have gone bananas. That was Kate one. So you're Kate F. There she is. Kate, Kate Alyssa. Hey, Annie, how are you? Henny, if you want a reading, let me know you're not too late. I don't think. All right. All right, this brings us to Shalia. Shalia, Shalia, Shalia. And it is the Queen of Cups. All right, Shalia, what's going on with you? What's going on with you? The queen of cups, right? So we think, always remember, we think about the queen and the king together. We think about them in a pair. They're a duo, right? The queen of cups is the quiet confidant of the king. The king is about decision, action. The queen here, I want you to really focus in on the imagery of this card. Look at her in her quiet contemplation. Right, It almost looks as though she's holding a cup of tea close and really just thinking about all the things that are going on. Right now, Shalia, your job is the Queen of Cups. Your job is to add that sense of care, nurturing, contemplation, quiet thought, and really encompassing thought into your world with all things that relate to love, emotion, and relationships, kind of the, the, the water elements of your world. All of these things need your quiet leadership, your quiet, conf, your quiet guidance, your kind of quiet confidence, the ability for you to stand there next to decisions that are being made, help you to influence that in a positive way that assures that whatever decisions are being made are being made with all things in mind. That's part of your job, to make sure that everything is being contemplated and for the aftercare of that decision, right? Regardless of what happens, your job as the queen is to nurture the kingdom and nurture, um, nurture all the things within this kind of love and relationship and whatever parties may be hurt or whatever struggle there may be. So that's gonna be your job, Shalia. <laughs> All right, honey, I'll add you to the list. All right, so that was Shalia. Hopefully that makes sense, Shalia. Let me know in the comments. This brings us to Robin, and then I got another question for you. I got another question. Well, Kathy, what I can tell you is when we get there, when we get to your reading, set your intention in your head. What is it you want to know about? And the card will give you the answer. My pleasure, honey. All right, Robin, here we go. My dog is... A little grumbly <laughs> he's a little grumbly tonight we took the tree down and moved furniture around and he's a little out of sorts <laughs> grumpy old man um okay so robin this one's for you it's a high priestess i love this card and i love this card for a lot of reasons <clears throat> i love this card because the character in it is just so damned cool just so cool robin just like you the high priestess talks a lot about keeping a balance between the dark 
and the light and looking within for the guidance that we need. So while everything's happening around you, Robin, and you may be seeking a higher spiritual power, the connection that you need to that is within. So while you may be going to other people and asking questions of a spiritual guidance nature, the high priestess is going to push you back and say, you have the answers. The answers are within you. You are the priestess. So the situation that you're facing or about to face, where you're going to want guidance from everyone else, and my bet and spirits whispering to me is you're going to go seek it elsewhere and everywhere. And you're going to find that at the end of that, the answer was in you the whole time. And you're not going to, you're going to get frustrated because everybody's going to have different little bits of the answer and it's going to frustrate you. But the high priestess says, don't be frustrated. The high priestess says, look within you and look within all the experiences you've had for your connection to higher power, your connection to the divine and your connection to the divine answers. So that's for you, Robin. Look within for the guidance that you need on the situation that you're facing. Well, congratulations to you, Shalia. I think we knew that you were having some surgery and now you're learning to live again. Isn't that awesome? You're welcome, Pam. Or you're welcome. You're welcome, Robin. All right. Next question. Next question. What do you prefer to read with? Well, which do you prefer to use? The tarot or oracle systems? Tarot or oracle systems? Put a comment in the box. Let me know. I'm curious. Hey, Pam, how are you? All right. And while you're commenting, tarot or oracle, which is your favorite? We're going to read Teresa. All right, Teresa, for you, it's the Three of Pentacles. All right, the Three of Pentacles is, again, resources, time, money, energy. It's your physical world, the things that are in your physical reality. And the Three of Pentacles talks about uh, progress with regard to your resources, but that maybe the plans that you had are not working out exactly as you intended. I think, Teresa, that this for you right now means they're working out better than intended, still not as intended, right? And I usually take this from, look at the character, they're kind of like, hmm, that is not exactly the same color green that I wanted. And I like a different color green, but I like this. That's what I, I wanted, a different color, but I really like this. I think in your case, it's working out better than you intended, or it's going to work out better than you intended. So just have faith right now, Teresa, that how your resources are being gathered, how your resources are being used uh, in your world, maybe not going as you intended to go, but everything is going to be okay. And it's actually, I think what Spirit's whispering to me, it's actually going to work out better than you intended. It's just going to take a little bit of study and a little bit of thinking on how you can kind of reorganize the rest of this journey around what's happened. So that's for you, Teresa. Let me know if that makes sense. Uh, Yesenia, I will add to the list. You know the deal. We read till about 10 o'clock. Huh. There's kind of almost an even breakdown between tarot and oracle. I'd be curious as to why. So why one over the other? Hello, Don. how are you? Uh, why one over the other? Why, if you picked one and you have a strong, strong preference, why that system over another? I'm just curious. All right, Christina, this brings us to you. And we have the death card. Bum, bum, bum. I'm glad that we got the death card 
because I've always I've wanted to show this card off in Terra Tuesday. I love the imagery of this card. I love the the multiple colors. So if you notice th throughout the deck, it's kind of mono coloring, right? We kind of do shades of purple and black, shades of blue and black, but here we do a little bit more. All right, so death signifies change. But in this system too, I think it reads a little differently. So we look at Rider Waite and we look at other systems. And we say death signifies a major change coming for you, a, a real major change coming for you. It also can mean death. that doesn't in this case, Christina. But what I think that I like about this car is it doesn't talk about the change. It talks about the rise from the change right here. And I think seeing the angel of death, so to speak, right, the wings up kind of sick in the kind of the positioning within the grave with the gravestones here. I see this really as a rise from a massive change for you. So if you haven't already started this change, it's coming for you. But you are going to rise from it in a very positive way. So you think about the rider weight, what you see is the death of somebody on the ground and death riding in on a horse and blah, blah, blah. But I think what I see here for you in this card is really the rise from that change, that it get, it's about hope, it's about encouragement, it's about that this change is necessary for you in order for you to rise to the next level. So think about it like a leveling up. So that's for you, Christina. So there's gonna be a little bit of trouble there's going to be a little bit of mourning how this change has gone for you or how it will go for you. But you will rise like the angel here. Well, Don says, Don asks a very good question, which is what is the difference between tarot and oracle? Um, tarot is really more of a, a full-fledged system, right? Tarot systems tend to follow follow a system, Smith weight, Rider weight, whatever it may be. And it's kind of consistent. There are four suits, a major arcana. The suits go from ace to king, um, like you would in a deck of cards, uh, plus the major arcana, and they all follow the same major arcana, right? They follow the fool all the way to whatever is at the end. And I don't remember off the top of my head, but um, so it's a system that's a little bit more rigid where Oracle is, a, is in my opinion, a little bit more open. Um, so Oracles are used a lot for in divination like we're doing here, but also for personal meditation and personal uh, prayer, personal guidance. So a lot of Oracle systems come with um, meditative guidance or prayerful guidance, uh, mantra type guidance that you can use. All right. This brings us to Claudia one. Claudia one, the seven of pentacles. So again, pentacles resources. This is a time for you to not cultivate yet the resources that you've been working towards, but rather to enjoy their growth. So the investments that you've been putting into your life, don't pull them out yet. This is a time for you to look and say, damn, this is really going along. I'm really making some progress and really just stop and reflect. What has led you to this point? Look how well you're doing. Celebrate how well you're doing, but don't stop doing it. That's the seven of pentacles in this case, I think, it's really clean, really easy. Just lean on your your rake there and say, wow, I've done amazing work. And that's what you need to be doing right now, Claudia. It's kind of pulling back. I think for what they're whispering to me is family, the investments in family, the investments in, in those relationships are really paying out for you. And you're starting to see that. This is the time to really relish that. All right, let's catch up on some comments here. All right, Angelina, that's good. Pam likes the structure of tarot. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. 
Ian's right. I mean, that's Oracle does that to some degree. Depends on the creator, right? Some some creators like the Hero's Journey is is a very structured system. If and you could read it within the structure, and it would be incredible. You don't you don't have to, but you could because it's got several layers of structure to it, and you would be a very successful reader with it. It's not for the faint of heart. Hey, Scott, how are you? Um, sure, Scott, I'll add you to the list. Absolutely. Hey, Devel, how are you? Hey, Scott from London. Someone else is from, from the UK as well. Liz is out there from the UK, and she's coming up on a reading pretty soon. So here's what's going on. I got Angelina, Tracy, Tina, uh, Cassie, Liz, and Kate F, or... Kate too, if you prefer Kate, um, and then others after that. Been chit chatting, been chitty chatting as we ease into the year. What's next week's card? Does anybody know what next week's deck is? If you know what next week's deck is, put it in the comments. I want to see who's right. Mark, how are you? Teresa's in the UK as well. A lot of UK people. That's awesome. I'm so thrilled about that. All right, so Angelina, for you, it's the Ten of Cups. And the Ten of Cups, like the Ten of Pentacles, talks about this kind of, it's kind of an in-state in this emotional relationship love journey um, that you've been taking on. I'm not saying the end of a relationship. I'm just saying that whatever you've been working on has come to a place where it can logically transition into the next the next phase or the next thing. And the Ten of Cups is really about a real, I think this card reads a little differently than Rider Waite too. The imagery on this card leads me to believe or leads me to think about the relationship as divinely celebrated divinely celebrated. So the things that you've done, the hard work that you put in, Angelina, and I feel like this is towards children. I feel like this is towards your, towards family, towards children, towards younger people, that the love, the emotional support, the caring, the nurturing, the relationships you fostered with them has reached a stage of a transition, but that it is being divinely celebrated the work that's been put in on your part and their part, standing together, but looking back on the relationship and really thinking about that in terms of a positive transition, a positive growth, and really all the things that have led you here have been mapped in the universe for all, for all of eternity and for all of us to look back on. So I think that's for you, Angelina. So hopefully that's a message of hope and comfort for you. Cards, Joe says cards in general. Yep, Claudia got it right. Next week's deck is uh, the Santa Muerte Tarot. We haven't done it in a while. And I owe Claudia, Claudia, I owe you a reading with the Ouija board. I just have not been able to. I had everything set up last week to get my podcast out on Monday. And my files got corrupted. And I was like, you know what? To hell with this. I'm going to. I'm going to go to the beach. <laughs> the dice are in two weeks, EM. That's good. Yeah, Mark, I can add you the list. I read till about 10, uh, and then I knock off. All right, Tracy, um, you're up. Tracy, Tina, Cassie, Liz, Kate, too, and other Tracy. Oh, my God. I don't know the difference between you. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't remember. I'm so sorry. All right, Tracy won. <laughs> you have to figure it out. If you're the Tracy that came in later, you're the other Tracy. <laughs> or maybe the cards will be for both of you. I don't know. Six of Wands. Wands, work, effort, task, right? It's a suit of doing things. It's a suit of work. <clears throat> and the Six of Wands, look, 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 in comes the triumphant hero you, Tracy, riding your horse. Look at all I've done. Look at all I can do. Look at how expert I am. 
and look at the people around you. Hooray! Whack! Hooray! Whack! Be careful. I hear a lot of celebration around you, but in the celebration, I also hear jealousy. It is the card's wish. It is spirit's wish for you to look at that jealousy and try to turn it around. Be mindful of it. Be wary of it. Don't call it out like a jerk. Hey, quit being jealous of me. But rather, make sure that you are celebrating the success of this of the work, tasking things that you do with the understanding that a lot of people have helped you get to this point. Be thankful to them and all of this for the things that have helped you get to this point. It is that gratitude. It's that mindfulness of the celebration and the potential jealousies that will help give you the energy to continue to move forward. If we look further down the cards, we'll start to see that there's a little bit more kind of potential for threat in seven through 10. So just be mindful that things are going to get a little bit harder from this point out. It can be easier provided you are mindful of it. Sounds like good guidance. Could be Angelina. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Kathy. How are you? All right. Tracy, you're, oh, so that was Tracy. This brings us to Tina. Tina, Tina, Tina. There's only one Tina. All right. You know what? Spirits tell me to spirits tell me to give these cards a better shuffle. Hang on. All right, Tina, this one's for you. And it is the three of cups. Oh, joy, joy, joy. Three of cups. Three of cups is a card of emotions, love, relationships, right? And I think this, I think I'm, I'm hearing this is a significant person in your life, maybe a significant other Tina. And I'm hearing that there's um, um, like the ace brings this person to you. The two is kind of that new relationship smell. And the three is a realization of um, the power and the unity that you have together. Um, I see in this card more celebration than conflict. And that's why I see it more as the realization of the power that you represent together. That not only are you joining together as individuals, but that you're joining together your lives. The three, the third person in here talks to me about kind of the world co coming together, right? That person represents all the things that are mine and all the things that are yours and a kind of a coming together in a way that's a little bit a little bit more beneficial for you a little bit more um a little bit more powerful for you and it's a wrecking the three of cups here talks about celebrating being happy and recognizing that you have this kind of new power together because things are going well because your lives are feeling good, because this new aspect or new relationship is going exactly the way that you think it should go. So that's for you, Tina. All right. Well, Tracy, it might not, I'm not sure if it's you or not. It might be the other Tracy. Okay, this brings us to Cassie. Yeah, that's my fault, Tracy's. I'm sorry. And I, oh, and look, the two of cups. Um, well, I'm glad. I'm glad, Tina. I'm glad. All right. So, all right, so this brings us to Cassie, and this is the Two of Cups. So we talked a lot about the Two of Cups just now. 
and we talked about the three of cups with Tina. So the two of cups represents this kind of, I want, want the word I want you to think about, the phrase I want you to think about is new relationship smell. So this could be a new aspect of a relationship. And I feel like that's exactly what this is, Cassie. This kind of new, um, I want to think there's a lot of forgiveness. There's a lot of, um, a lot of a kind of new energy being put into um, this relationship. And it might feel new. It might have that new relationship smell where you're recognizing that the kind of the joining of two individuals, it's that fun, romantic dating time. And that thing that you always need to be working towards rekindling in your relationships. And maybe that's really the thing here is that you need to be rekindling the relationship and putting into it these kind of new relationship energies and looking for new aspects to help you come together as individuals, as one and one, not one, one's worlds and one another one's worlds coming together, but rather just two people and getting to know each other a little bit more again, kind of like porcupines kissing, just be a little bit careful, but celebrate it and understand that it can be very powerful for you. Starting to lose my voice. You were not Mark, you're, um, that was Cassie. Right, the Haneo card, right? All right, this brings us to Liz. So if you're the other Tracy, if, if Tracy V is Tracy too, the other Tracy, remind, remember that the tarot is predictive. It's not, it's not like, hey, so what's going on right now? What we said is that this effort, this work project that you're working on is coming to a point where you're going to be uh, celebratorious, but recognize that within the effort, the work, the energy, or kind of the work that you're doing in this world, that there is the potential for negative feelings. So don't read it literally like jealousy, read it like negativity. The Six of Wands always talks about, be careful that you don't get overconfident, don't get cocky, because there are those, whether you see them or not, there are those that are there to unseat you. That's what the Six, that's what the six of Wands represents, always. All right, for me, Liz, this is up for you, and it's the Five of Pentacles. So we saw this earlier, I forget with whom. The Five of Pentacles talks about resources, time, money, energy, the things you use to get the things you want. And the Five of Pentacles talks about a bit of a, a downstroke here in terms of how you've been using your time, money, time, energy, and money. Right, and so, so we're in a bit of a lull, a bit of a downstroke. It's maybe unexpected, but it's frustrating. And that's why you see the character kind of head in hand. But recognize right now, Liz, that that downstroke, in terms of your time, money, energy, right, the resources in your life, is just temporary. It's gonna have an upstroke, but you're gonna have to get through it. So don't spend all your time wallowing. I always feel like the five of pentacles is like an exit point. Like we have a choice to make here. We can, we can go the, what was me stop all action route, or we can go the, this is goddamn temporary and I'm going to work my ass off to get back on track. I feel like there's a decision to be made here. And I feel like that's up to you how you want to approach it, Liz. But what I can tell you is if you work towards getting through this next period, which will be a lull, there'll be more for you. So we've already seen seven. And hey, Scott, thanks for coming in. I know it's late for you. I appreciate you coming in. Well, Kathy, I don't have you until later on. All right, so that was Liz. This brings us to Kate too. All 
right, K2, the sun. Oh, look at this card. It's a fun card. I mean, I want it to be yellow, but I'm happy that it's sunny. <laughs> All right. So look, you can see Stonehenge in this. And the sun represents for this K2, this KDF, okay? Um, KDF, this represents, the sun represents kind of a, a think of it, really think about this like embracing the sun. Like really think about what it would be like to go and stand in the sunrise, arms outstretched, right? It is the bright happiness sunshine in your life and that is where you're at or where you're headed towards right now kate the sun also tells you that you will be seeing things clearly so in this bright happiness the celebration this world anew feeling that you that you're manifesting for yourself you're also going to start to see things really clearly the power of the sun card is that it it provides this level of clarity and euphoria and happiness and brightness. The problem with the sun card is it sometimes seems fleeting. It is our job to work hard to keep the sun there. So I think for you, <clears throat> I want you to think about the sun as this kind of brightness, this happiness, and this absolute clarity in your life about what it is you want to do to continue that feeling you need to foster that clarity and move clarity into action so that you can keep being happy keep being bright keep being sunny so that's for you kate no stinking thinking All right, this brings us to Tracy V, the other Tracy. All right there, old dog. Old dog is gurgly. <laughs> he's gurgly. Also, he's like, it's 10 o'clock, pal. <laughs> like, it's bedtime for the old dog. All right, Tracy V, this one's for you, and it's the Hierophant. So we saw the high priestess earlier, and the high priestess talks about seeking wisdom within. The Hierophant is about seeking wisdom without. The Hierophant is about what you need right now, Tracy, Tracy V, Tracy Two, is that you need to be, you're at a point now where you've got a lot of things going on. I see a lot of decisions that need to be made, and you're trying to figure it out for yourself. I see you searching the internet clicking clacking and scrolling and trying to find guidance but you're not looking in the right place the hairpin isn't just about look everywhere the hairpin is about look to the expert so tarot's guidance for you right now tracy is that you need to kind of knuckle under and accept the expert's advice maybe it's a cost issue maybe it's a trust issue maybe it's a validation issue, maybe it's a not finding the right expert issue, whatever it may be, your job right now, Tracy, is to find the Hierophant, find the expert, and be forthcoming in what you need and seek the guidance of the Hierophant, right? Seek the guidance of the expert. You're going to have a choice to make, of course, as you always do, whether to follow or not. But of course, if you're going to seek the Hierophant's advice, it might be wise if you trust it to follow it. So I think for you right now, the situation that you're facing, it's time to trust the experts. Find the experts, trust the experts, okay? So hopefully that makes sense for you, Tracy. Mark's still here. All right. Well, Mark, you're... you're <laughs> Good night, Liz. Thank you for joining us. Well, Kathy, I don't... So, Kathy, I don't read out of the comments. So it's not that your question is too deep for me. I don't read out of the comments based on what people are asking in the comments. But also you're not, you're like two readings away. So it's not that I haven't, it's not that your comment, your question was too difficult for me because it certainly isn't. But rather I read an order of the list. And so the next person is Claudia too, 
or the other Claudia, then Kathy, who's you. So you're not there yet. So don't get, you know, and, and the rest of the group here will let you know that I get a little bit perturbed about comment trolling. So don't like, if you're gonna troll, go. Like that's, I really feel that way. Like I'm giving free stuff away and I'm not gonna get trolled. But if you feel like your question is deep and needs a reading, I also offer those at cost. So that's how I feel about it. So like just kind of, kind of, you know, cool your jets. If you're going to get, if you're going to get troll, I'm going to bounce you. All right. All right. Other Claudia. The world. Oh, we haven't had the world in like months. <laughs> the world card. So the world is a major arcana card. This is for other Claudia. Um, other Claudia who we've not seen in a while. So welcome back. Um, the world card talks kind of about how right now you need to be bringing everything together, right? It's about strength and wisdom and knowledge and magic and all of those things. All right, no problem, man. You're bounced. See ya. I mean, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but I'm not going to be trolled in the comments. And that's how the deal works. <laughs> bounced. Jeez, what, what are you going to do? All right. So the world, this is somebody who's coming back in, back out and in, out and in, out and in to the feed and wondering why they're not being called upon. All right. So anyway, let's focus on the good things. Claudia, other Claudia, the world card is kind of like this, this, this tying together. So look at the wreath, the laurel here. I want you to focus in on this imagery. The laurel ties together all the aspects of your existence, your spirit, your knowledge, your wisdom, your experience, your work, your effort, your magic, all of these things. And now it feels, I'm going to tell you, Claudia, that it feels like these things are going this way, this way, away from you, right? The world card is saying, we need to tie these things together. We're starting to feel like it's frazzled and fraying and coming away from the end, right? This is where we need to really think about um, bringing these things together, right? Bringing these things together. And that takes a lot of work. Tying all these things together takes a lot of work, but it's time for you to really start to work these things together, start to shed the things that don't make sense so that you can bring kind of, think about it, it's like sculpture. You're trying to bring all these things to bear. You need, really need to, it's not easy. Like I get a sense of real hardship and heartache and frazzled and trying to move things together, but you need to bring together what you're about to face will need spirit, experience, education, wisdom, magic, physical energy. And having that all together is what makes your world powerful. All right, so that's other Claudia. We bounced her onto Henny. We're gonna do the last four. Um, so it's Henny, Yesenia, Scott, and Mark. Uh, and I know Scott checked out because he uh, he had to go to bed, but someone can let Scott know that he got a reading. He can come back in for the replay. All right, Henny, here we go. What's up with Henny? Oh, Henny. You had a, you had a leaper. You had a leaper. It's the ten of cups. <clears throat> so Henny, the ten of cups is love, emotions, relationships, emotionally important relationships, right? And Henny, this talks about. Um, I think this card reads a little differently than the ten of cups in Rider Waite, in that I really see this as a looking back on or looking upon an accomplishment that you, and I, I'm going to read this card almost literally out of the symbolism, right? You and your partner have fostered this wonderful field of kind of fertility and fruitfulness, this world, this world that you've created together. And the 10 of cups is about kind of in this deck, 
is really kind of about the divine celebration of that, that looking back on and taking a deep, cleansing, celebratorious breath of, wow, wow, look what we've done. I think for you, Henny, this is a place where you need to be. You really need to be looking back at how much, how far, how great everything has been to this point. Because again, the Ten of Cups isn't the end, it's a transition. Okay? It's a transition. So, all right, so that's so that's for you, Henny. Hopefully that makes sense. This is a real, that's a fun card to get, right? Because it's about celebrating the wonderful things that you can create in your life. <laughs> yes, Kate. Kate, too, thank you so much for managing your trying to, trying to help. Thanks, Mark. I have, there's actually two. If you look back in old videos, Mark, there's another hat uh, that I had. Um, and... The, the, my family, who I refer to as Mrs. Dr. Mystical and the Little Mysticals, got me this. But my youngest Little Mystical runs around in my old hat, and we have like little private videos of him saying, hello, everybody, it's Dr. Mystical. It's very funny. All right, Yesenia, this brings us to you. So it's Yesenia, Scott, and Mark, and then that's going to be it for the night. All right, Yesenia, it's the King of Swords. Whew. We haven't had swords all night, Yesenia. We needed you to come along to break into another suit. Good for you. Thank you for that. All right, so Yesenia, the King of Swords. Swords is uh, a suit of the mind, thought, ideas, knowledge, intelligence. And the King of Swords, Yesenia, is about making discernible, dis like actionable decision, right? Not screwing around. Boom, decision. Boom, action. The king is always for me about kind of direct action, ready to go. We have all the information we need and we run off going. But like most kings, he can sometimes suffer from overconfidence. <laughs> so the king is wise to take the wisdom of the queen. So for you, Yesenia, make sure that your decision, this kind of quick, actionable decision has weighed all of the, all of the criteria, all of the perspectives, all of the no available knowledge that you have. The key word there being, Yesenia, available knowledge. It doesn't mean keep researching. It's not a paralysis by, uh, by analysis. The the King of Swords talks about taking action. Just take action based on the knowledge you have. Stop trying to go through the motions of additional research and additional things. If you've got it all, you've got it all. If you're leaning towards the decision, the King of Swords would say, strike. So thoughts, ideas, knowledge. You've been thinking about something for a while. Now's the time to put that iron, get that iron out of the fire. Well, okay, so Kathy's still kicking around, so we're skipping you. So, like, <laughs> like, Kathy, it's if you're going to challenge me, challenge me. Go into my, PM me, I'll send you a PayPal link, and you can challenge me there. That's how we're going to do it. I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and be trolled by somebody who, who can't do the work. Do the work or don't, go beat it. All right, Scott, this one's for you. I know Scott had to go to sleep because he's in the UK and I appreciate him joining. So here's we go. So Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups is an interesting card. And if you know the writer weight, you see the Seven of Cups with all these little figures in it. But, and this is why I love Spirit Within. The Spirit Within shifts our thinking about tarot into a way that is sometimes a little bit more intuitive or approachable. So for you, Scott, I see you in this kind of contemplation about your relationships in your life. I see you kind of at a point right now, Scott, where you're weighing the positives and negatives. Who should I leave behind? 
Who should I keep around? What should I do in these relationships? In which direction should I go? And I see this as probably a very natural point in your life for you to be thinking about this. And I see probably spiritually, intuitively, I hear spirit saying, you do this a lot, where you kind of pull back the relationships a little bit and say, what's going on here? And I think that that contemplative way of approaching your relationships is very beneficial. And the Seven of Cups for you probably is a good spirit card. The Seven of Cups right now tells you that this is a time for you to do that, for you to pull back and contemplate the relationship or relationships that are most on your mind or most active in your life, right? And in that contemplation, allow yourself to manifest how those relationships can go. I think, Scott, sometimes you think their power is in their hands. And the power here, the Seven of Cups tells us, is in our hands. So while you're considering this, think about what you can put into those relationships, okay? So that's for you. All right. <laughs> yeah, you know, Mark, this one kind of, I'll be honest. So this brings, so there are segue to Mark. Um, this hat wobbles a bit and it could use a good, it could use a good steaming to fit my hat. And that, so paper is an interesting way to go. And I had thought about that. I've steamed them. I've steamed this one to make the brim a little bit better. Probably what I need to do is take it to a haberdashery or a hatter and have them fix it. Um, which I think is okay and reasonable and not something everybody does. <laughs> like, have you been to a hatter? <laughs> I, I, I went to when I was in Portland, I went to a haberdashery for the first time in my whole life, bought myself a real nice hat. And I met a guy once who said, if you never need a good hat, I have a hat guy. And I thought that was a really funny statement. All right, this brings us to the last ring of the night, and it is for Mark, my, comp my compadre in hat purchasing. So before I get there, this weekend, Fort Myers, Florida, the 12th and 13th at the Shriner, um, at the Shriner, uh, the Shriner's place there in Fort Myers, the Southwest Florida UFO and Paranormal Con. Come down, see, it's two days. They've got great talks on UFO stuff and paranormal and psychic abilities, um, readers and talks and uh, cryptozoology and a great lineup of guests. And I really think that you'll find this con super approachable. I think judging from the people who have been lined up, you'll also find them very approachable. So people you've wanted to talk to or questions you've wanted to get answered, this is the crowd for you. So come down, spend the weekend, come say hello with me. I would love that. And this brings us to you, Mark. And it is the Eight of Swords. So again, swords, the suit of the mind, thoughts, ideas, knowledge. The Eight of Swords is about self-restrictions, Mark. So for you, it's really your own thinking that's in your way. Think about what this, excuse me, what this looks like in the Rider Waite. It's a female character, a maiden, who's loosely bound, cannot see loosely bound by her own thoughts. And it's her own thoughts that are withering away the world around her. And so Mark, for you, you can see in this card that you are penned in, you are locked in, imprisoned by your own thoughts. So if you've been feeling stuck and you've been feeling a little bit downtrodden and you've been feeling a little bit like you're unable to make forward progress, the Eight of Swords would suggest that you look in the mirror before you look in the window, right? Look at yourself and what is your thinking doing? And... <clears throat> Spirit whispered in my ear, imposter syndrome. So imposter syndrome is this belief that you cannot or shouldn't be doing something that you're doing, right? That you're yet not qualified or yet not good enough or yet not um, okay to do these things. And this sometimes holds people back. This also might have to do, and they're whispering in my ear, might have to do with a job. 
It might have to do with maybe looking for a job that you don't feel quite qualified for. And the Eight of Swords would say, move past that mark. The Eight of Swords says, you're being penned in by your own thinking and only you can release yourself by, by taking a chance, by pushing your way past these thoughts and seeing what comes. So that's for you, Mark. I think that's good for all of us. I think we all get thoughtful in our in, in our heads and we get in our own way. I think we get in our own way. And sometimes we hold ourselves back because of our thinking. We don't feel like we can. We don't feel like we should. And we should. And we can. And we do it. And so that's for you, Mark. And that's for everybody. Friends, hopefully I will see you at Fort Myers, Florida this weekend. I'm looking forward to that. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining me tonight for Tarot Tuesday with the Spirit Within Tarot from Stephen Bright Tarot. Please click that link in the show description and go like his page. Tell him I sent you. I would love for that. Uh, a fabulous artist, and I'm happy to follow him and see his great, great work. In addition, friends, we'll be back next week, 9 p.m. U.S. Eastern with the Santa Muerte tarot a beautiful deck by fabio lastrani until then be kind to one another be good to each other and be kind to the world around you i'm looking forward to seeing you friends thank you so much so much for joining me